to me is knowing that there's something that carries you. As long as you have breath, you have hope. I, I think it's like oxygen. I don't think you could live without it. Hope to my life means all that God has said. It is the confidence. I have a, a new confidence in my life, in God like I have never had before. When you think of the word hope, what does it truly mean to you? It's been almost 30 years and I stood in this exact spot looking at that beautiful Verrazano Bridge in Brooklyn, New York. And with one hand, I was shaking up to the heavens asking if there was a God. I needed help. And in the other hand, I was contemplating on taking my own life. See, there was something inside that was saying, get up, give me one more day, give me one more chance. See, hope will always see the invisible, feel the intangible, and hope will always, always accomplish the impossible. In my world, Hope stands for having optimum positive emotions about something that seems nearly impossible. It's been 30 years, and over the last 20, I've been meeting wonderful people that have been teaching me and you the power of hope. My memories of growing up with my brother were amazing. They were, I could get choked up thinking about it. They were full of life. Uh, we were a team. Many memories of my childhood were amazing, but it wasn't perfect. Tumultuous and yet calming and soothing. It was confusing. It was interesting. It was like being on a giant cruise liner luxury type of resort uh, and and then there was a tidal wave coming so you were on this great ride and then all of a sudden you were crashing at some point I spent many years trying to steer my sister and me away from abusive situations with our father so what you're saying is that when my father would <clears throat> come to attack me my brother would try to be the cushion to prevent that from going further. He had difficulties with his father, their relationship. Um, his dad was very angry, um, Peter, and uh, he went through a lot of challenges with his father. To me, my husband was the best, no matter what his problems were. He was the great father. He was a great husband. He took us on vacation, gave us things. He had a sickness, but he was very good with Peter taking hunting, fishing. To add more stress and fuel to the situation, I started to get sick when I was just 15. And that's when we found out that Peter had Crohn's disease. And it was very difficult before we found out. He used to go to the bathroom 10, 12 times a day. Uh, I had a wonderful neighbor upstairs that helped and my mother. It was tough, but we took care of it. It was very hard emotionally on me and my whole family. I think being together and loving each other, we pulled each other through, we counted on each other. <clears throat> and I think um, there is an unknown, you know, there is something that is an unknown that you can count on. Because in the toughest of times, you're in an abyss, you know, and at the time when my brother was sick, he was really sick. I mean, we spent Christmas and New Year's in the hospital with him. Um, you know, we brought the party to the hospital and we didn't know what the next week was going to bring. And I think it was our faith. The Crohn's disease changed my whole life. 
I came close to throwing in the towel and giving up, but something inside of me pushed me to dig deep and go further. Very strong boy, really strong. I got involved in bodybuilding. He learned probably how to eat, what to eat. As I became bigger and stronger, my faith and compassion for others, unfortunately, grew smaller. Peter was actually probably my first boyfriend, and we met many years ago, and uh, we had a great relationship. We had some difficulties in our relationship further down the road. He was caught up in the bodybuilding circle. It was a crazy lifestyle for all of us that were in the bodybuilding scene. And certainly a lot of that had affected him, uh, both of us, pretty much. And it was very hard to get out of that because he rose to the, the top so quickly being young. I tried to share with him about the gospel. And uh, you know, I knew at the, at the time he wasn't open to it because he had a lot going on in his life. I gave him his first Bible. Did he read it? Uh, probably not, but he, it, wasn't, it was not his time at that point. But years later, my father got really sick, and it was Yvonne that came back to help. I pretty much went over to see his mom, you know, and, and talked to his father, and I know the family was in an uproar. They thought uh, pretty much, oh, he's going to throw her out of the room. They were scared. Don't, you know, get too heavy with this Jesus stuff. But to our surprise, Yvonne didn't get kicked out of the room. He accepted Christ with me, and, and all of heaven shook. The angels rejoiced, and now he is in heaven because he accepted Christ. And I'm just so blessed that I was able to be a part of the divine plan that God had for Peter's father. Just 48 hours later, my sister Kim knew it was my father's time. I saw him struggling, and I held him in my arms, and I asked him, please breathe, Dad, breathe. And he tried, and he couldn't, and so he he passed away right there. And in a moment, everything that took place was gone. It was ab everything was gone. The pain, the anger, the frustration, the confusion, the desperation. Um, everything was gone. He was gone. He wasn't supposed to go alone. He wasn't. He was supposed to be surrounded by his children and his wife and everybody that loved him. And to feel that, because I think he realized what he had done and he couldn't repair that. That's what this man needed. He needed to know that it was okay, that, that whatever he did, he could be forgiven. And that's the grace of the Lord, that Jesus forgives. So I had that opportunity to share the love of God with him on his dying, you know, um, uh, bed, deathbed, and uh, he was very receptive and he knew what he had done, he knew the bad things, and he had a repentant heart, yet he was remorseful, you know, for the things that he did to his son and daughter and so forth. It's amazing to think that only a few years ago I was on the brink of death. I had a severe flare up of my Crohn's disease. Doctors told me that I needed a life saving surgery. So when you have to tell, your four-year-old or your seven-year-old that um, daddy's pretty sick. It's, um, I can't even put it in words on how only God could give you the strength to do that. The main reason why I'm telling this story, the main reason is not for someone to get to know Peter Neal, is for someone to understand that this could happen to anyone. My doctor told me that my intestines were so blocked I wouldn't have lived past two weeks if the problem wasn't discovered and I didn't have surgery. Hey, buddy. Everything went well. After the surgery, life seemed to be normal. Then one night, a couple of months later, I was having severe pain. I collapsed and my heart stopped for 43 seconds. I had another blockage and another close call with death. But it wasn't my time. 
It was a scary experience for me and my whole family. See, fear channeled wrong can turn into anger, and when faced with a devastating situation, some people may actually get upset and ask the Lord, why me? They blame God at times, but instead of turning away, I turn my faith to get me through this. I know God definitively gave me this experience to mold me into the man I am today. I used it as a, a vehicle to build self-love, self-esteem, and um, determination. And, and it's my mission to tell people, you can't Death or near-death experiences as Peter experienced them. Um, the, the abusive behavior of his father. Um, all someone has to say is help. <laughs> I often say probably the most effective prayer any one of us can ever pray is help. Help God. Pastor Paul Bershey is my spiritual advisor. I've known him for more than 27 years. He has seen what happens to a man when he gives himself completely to his faith. Peter knows the fire of God and the cry of God's heart for brokenness in the world. What makes Peter or any one of God's people smile the way they do in the midst of pain and difficulty is that they are captured by the very same heart that God bears in hoping for people to become, to come out of their broken place. Even my family and friends saw the change. I thought I lost him for a while, you know, but again, I think that was part of his journey to get lost inside of himself, to understand who he is, and to really emerge this person that he was meant to be. And I think he had to go through that process. I think he had to go through that abyss to come out the other side. And I'm not surprised by the work he's doing, quite honestly. I'm so proud, to be honest with you, that he's reached such a level of his understanding um, of who he is and why he's here. I think we all go through life trying to find our purpose. And I'm so happy that he found his and he's gonna help so many people. When I see Peter and the changes, I'm not surprised because I knew long ago that God had a plan for him and giving him the Bible was just the start. I really felt that in my heart so when I gave him that Bible, I knew that God had big plans for his life because God was going to take what he had and his abilities and his gifts and talents and he was going to use them to touch the world. I see in Peter's future a, uh, an expansion of everything that God has brought to him to this point. Peter's principles has opened the door to a new hunger in his heart for God. That new hunger in his heart for God has caused him to be open to God's working in his life and changing him from whatever his desires were before, however right and righteous the end goal was that he had. God has lifted it out of that into something even greater, a broader expanse of, of influence for the gospel of Jesus Christ, for bringing desperate people the hope of God, not only for all of their troubles and trials, but for their soul to be redeemed and established with the assured promise that God will keep his promises to their lives. That's Peter's drive. That's the passion of his heart. I look back at my life. I remember my childhood and feeling like I hit rock bottom. But it was something I had to go through because out of that despair and devastation, I was given a gift, the gift of faith and hope. When you do get to that place is when that hope kicks in. 
and it carries you, just picks you right up and it gets you off that couch or it gets you out of some kind of mode that you're in. Um, and hope just means that, you know what, just hang in there because today looks like this, but you don't know what tomorrow's going to look like. And you have to wait till tomorrow comes because it might change in a heartbeat. And, and it does. And I think that, you know, life is a roller coaster and, and what goes up goes down and, and there's the ebb and the flow and that will come around again. I always thank God. Every day I thank God for what I have. I pray for my son and my daughter, Kim, and uh, that they're healthy and love and happiness. And as we move along from difficulty to difficulty and trouble to trouble in our lives, the scripture says, with the hope that we cry out to him for, he promises something very beautiful. My bodybuilding career started with some humble beginnings. When we come back, how you can succeed with just hope and a dream.